Hi everyone, I'm Dr. David Wackenfeld, the Chief Scientist at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, and I'm here with another of our weekly Great Barrier Reef health updates. As you can see, the water throughout the Great Barrier Reef is still showing up in the satellite images as being above average, and we have anomalies anywhere from plus one to plus two, plus two and a half in different parts of the marine park. Now, we need to treat some of that interpretation with a little bit of caution because there has been a lot of cloud cover in recent days in the far north of the Great Barrier Reef and in the Torres Strait. That's some of the area where we were seeing the worst heat stress, but that cloud cover compromises the ability of some of the satellites to see what's going on on the surface of the ocean. In contrast to the satellites, which are still giving us signals of a strong anomaly, an in-water logger on Thursday Island in the Torres Strait from the Australian Institute of Marine Science is actually showing us that there has been substantial cooling in the reef since last week, and the bleaching risk at Thursday Island is now low, whereas last week it was high. This means that we need to keep an eye on what's happening both in the water and from the satellites, as that cloud cover breaks up in order to get the whole picture. But there is a signal that perhaps things have cooled down with the recent rain. So when we now look at the accumulation of heat stress throughout the Great Barrier Reef, we see the ongoing pattern that we've seen evolving this summer where there is two areas where the heat stress has most accumulated. Way up in the far north, and down in the south inshore areas. That accumulation of heat stress in the far north may not be actually as bad as it looks in this map because of that effect of the cloud that we talked about a moment ago. So that's something we have to keep a very careful eye on in coming days. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.